Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Mondays with Michelle video. Local museums often have wonderful resources that can help us better understand the lives of our ancestors. This week, we will look at several maritime resources, North Yorkshire's Scarborough Maritime Heritage Centre and the Whitney Museum. We'll also explore a Canadian website, Newfoundland and Labrador's Maritime History Archive. Let's get started. So the first site I wanted us to look at is this Scarborough Maritime Heritage Centre. And the website is very easy to navigate. So if we scroll down, they've got what's on, which is basically indicating the physical displays they have right now at the Heritage Centre. If we click on featured articles, it is what you would expect. It's a list, a clickable link list of all kinds of articles on everything Scarborough, but specifically a lot of it focused on the maritime industry. And some items in particular, if you go down to the bottom of the list, it does talk about logbooks. It talks about, I'll just go to this, it's showing the Harbour Masters logbooks that have been loaned to them and the coverage date. So most of these are from the 20th century. However, there are a few like commissioners qualifying from 1829 all the way up to 1934. There's one Harbour Master logbook down here at the bottom from 1898 to 1901. So they do have some records going back a ways. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out, those of you who are interested in military records, they have a whole series of articles focusing on um, World War I from the standpoint of Scarborough individuals who were involved in those conflicts. So those of you who have an interest, a specific interest in military records might find that interesting. <clears throat> the other link I want to show you is this history of Scarborough. And you can, you will see a table of contents that shows all these different categories with information and it is quite extensive. Now one of the areas I wanted to look at is this harbour and old town life and you can get to the same category by clicking the Scarborough history menu up top and there it is, harbour and old town life. And one of the items I wanted to point out under this category is this Graham C. Training School, which I thought was quite interesting. And it was aimed at providing um, skills with a view to these individuals then going on to a career in the Navy. So there is a little history about the Graham C. Training School. They have accounts of life at sea. There's a write-up about one individual who went through the training. They also have a photo archive. So I thought that was quite, quite interesting. This website also has a gallery with all kinds of images. And again, I find these kinds of websites are really helpful for providing that background information, for helping us understand what our ancestors 
lives were like. And there is a wealth of information with regards to um, background information on the fishing industry, on just maritime life in general. The About Us section has this archive page. And there's a few things I wanted to point out. This particular clickable link, it says, for a list of digital copy of our indexes, please click here. If you click this link, you are seeing a list of the archive contents. And you can search it by clicking those little dots in the right corner of your browser and doing a find on page and then searching for a term. Or you could also use their search field up top and just search the whole website for particular information. So this gives detailed description by physical box of the holdings of their archive. The other item I wanted to show you is the library page. And this is showing their very extensive list of books to do with the maritime industry in Scarborough. And there are a lot of resources here. The next website I stumbled across was the Whitby Museum. And this is another website that I found very easy to navigate with a lot of useful information. So these yellow links are showing what's going on at the museum right now. If you click on collections, <clears throat> it's giving you this pictorial clickable link to the main areas of information about the museum. So for instance, if you click on Maritime Heritage, you will come to a page and you will have this clickable table of contents on the right hand side. Now, these particular items under collections are talking more about the physical objects that they have. What I want to focus on today is this library and archive link. And there's a few things I want to point out. So on the library and archive page, they do talk about what they have for local history, maritime history, family history. They have digitized copies of the Whitby Gazette. Now, sadly, you can't view them from this website, but if you visit the Whitby Museum, they do have issues from 1900 to 2000 digitized, and they have the Gazette going right back to 1854. Now, the the Whitby Gazette is one of the papers that is also available on British newspapers online and on Find My Past. So there are other places where you can access those papers if you want to look at them. If we look at this link called Muster Rolls. Now, Muster Rolls are basically lists of all of the members of the crew. And for each journey, the captain of the ship had to submit these lists of all of the crew members. So for those people who were in the merchant marines who were not, you know, military service, this is a really good way to trace their service history, because one of the items that muster rolls would list is not only 
the person's name, sometimes their date of birth, some it would list their age. It would also list the ship they last served on. And the muster roll lists the date they joined the ship and the date the voyage ended or their service ended. So by combing through these muster rolls, you can piece together your ancestors' service on these commercial ships. So the museum does have some muster rolls. And the nice thing is they have set up a portion of those as a searchable database. So for instance, if we click this link at the bottom that says examine and search, we come to this page. And if you scroll down, you will see what look like two spreadsheets. This top one says roll table. And the bottom one says crew table. If we look first at the crew table, this is where you're seeing the list of the crew members on the different boats. So for instance, if I was to search on the surname field, all I do is click in that surname column. And if I type, the minute I start typing a name, it's going to sort. So if I want to see the Sunleys, all I had to type was S-U-N-L. And I'm seeing this list filtered for all of the Sunley crew members. And if we look at the type of information, it is giving the age, if available. It is saying what position they held. It's saying where they lived, in some cases where they were born. This is showing the last boat they served on. This is the date they joined their current ship, the place where they joined, and when they left this ship and the place where the voyage ended or where they left the boat. Now, this number in the far left column, the roll number, is really important. That's the number that is going to tell you the name of the ship they are currently serving on. So if we look at this entry for John Sunley, age 14, and it says, the roll number is 5074. If I now scroll back up to this roll table spreadsheet and type in roll number 5074, it's telling me the name of that ship is the Polly and the ship's master is George Broderick. So that means this John Sunley joined the ship, the Polly, on this date, April 1st, 1765. And he finished the voyage or his term on that ship on October 1st, 1765. So the, the muster lists can give you a lot of useful information about your ancestors, particularly where they're kind enough to give birth dates. And in later years, the muster rolls would be referred to as crew agreements. There, it's not any different. It's the same information. Now, let's take a look at one of the other items. I wanted to point out under services and charges, one thing I thought was excellent when I looked at their research charges. They're only charging five pounds per half hour. 
for research after the first half hour, which is free. If you compare that to the rates for a lot of the other archives, um, it's not unusual to see fees of 15 to 25 pounds. So five pounds for a half hour of research, I think is really reasonable. So this website has a lot of good information that you might want to explore. Another resource I wanted to show you for those of you who are searching for information on your seafaring ancestors, the National Archives website does have some useful guides. So if you are looking for your merchant seamen ancestors, this guide is really useful. It tells you how to find the number of the ship, which is the key to locating your ancestor's name, because most of these documents are filed based on the ship's number and the year of their particular voyage. It gives information on where the early records are. Um, it gives information on the later records as well. And the interesting fact, at least I found it interesting, is very few of these muster records found in the British archives and museums. And I will be showing you the website that has 70% of those crew lists and agreements. It's actually an archive in Canada. So this guide is well worth looking at. And at the bottom, they provide links to other books that might be useful. But again, what I like is it gives an explanation of the different kinds of records and gives a bit of an overview on what those records are that might be useful. If you have ancestors that were seafaring individuals but were more in the military side, that would be the Royal Navy ratings records. And again, this gives you information on how to find those records. The National Archives does have a search screen. And if we type in Sunley, for example, well, here we see a list of results. And I'll just filter it to show the entries for the 1800s. So I click refine and we see there are two entries. So I actually viewed this entry for John Sunley. Now you notice this entry says the charge is three pounds 50, but it also says I can sign in to get it for free. So if you don't have an account set up for the National Archives website, you would just click register and create your account. There's no charge for it. And the minute you sign in, under your account, so I'll do that now. I'll click sign in. You notice now it's allowing me to download that item and there's going to be no charge. So I've already done that. I downloaded the item and this is what I was able to obtain. Here is the service record of John Sunley. And a few things to note, it gives his date of birth and his place of birth. It gives all this information here, a personal description. It gives his period of continuous service. And here is the list 
of the ships that he served on and the dates of his service. So again, that is extremely useful information. I mentioned a Canadian website that has a lot of information on your seafaring ancestors, and that's this Maritime History Archive. And there's a few um, items that I want to point out for this website. The main page here has clickable links. This is this top area is your main table of contents. This link here, NL Heritage website, Newf Newfoundland Heritage website, is the only link that's taking you to a separate website about Newfoundland heritage. These other links are all within the Maritime History Archive. And basically, if you click on any of these nine remaining links, you will end up at a page that looks like this, where that table of contents is now on the left. And if we click on research services, you have four different categories. The two that you would probably be most interested would be either researching ships and seafarers. And if we click on that, there are all kinds of clickable links buried in here. So for instance, if I click on crew lists and logbooks, it gives a lot of information here. And we have all those other clickable links at the side. If we were to click on, let me go back here. Let me just move this one more. If we were to click on principal records of shipping and seamen, this is showing the holdings that they have. And where to find some of those key documents that might be helpful. So again, it is a really useful resource if you are researching your seafaring ancestors. One of the other items is this page labeled external links. And I point that out just because there are so many links to other websites that may also have useful information. We've got the Southampton archives at the bottom. We've got National Archives of Ireland. Um, so again, depending on what your ancestors did, where they might have journeyed to, depending on what ships they were serving on, you could find records in a number of different places. This website also has some information on crew agreements. Now, most of the information you would have to write to them and ask them to research for you, but they do have some online databases. One of them is this crew list database. And I searched the crew list database for Sunly. So let me go back here. If we go into crew list database and we search on Sunly, and it gives you summary information. And I can click to view the linked 
image. And in this case, the reason why there were so many entries for John Sunley, he was actually the master of this vessel. So what we're seeing is the first page of the what's called the crew agreement, which is basically the report that John Sunley would have to submit with the list of all of the crew members. And the report, this um, crew agreement list, was usually about 12 pages long. Now, in this case, they've only digitized some of the pages because not all of the pages had information. But here you see John Sunley's signature. It gives the um, information on the name of the ship. This is that ship's number that we saw referenced in the muster roll that we looked at on the Whitby Museum. So it gives information about the ship itself. And if we scroll down, I like this part here, it says the crews define their own provisions. And if we go to the next page, this is where we are seeing the list of crew. So here is the master of the ship. He is his is the first entry here. And these are all of the crew members. And it's giving the town they were born in. And this says date of birth. It looks to me as if they've just listed their age. I think he got lazy. And it's giving information. Uh, this is where they last served. So for instance, if we scroll down, these are the names of the ships that they previously served on. Because every time someone joined a ship, they had to indicate what ship they last served on. So again, this is really useful information in tracing where your ancestor was. And as I said, we just page through, you can see this is the same type of information. Um, the sheet is quite wide. So we're just seeing the other kind of half of that image. Another item that they have on this website, this more than a list of crew. It's almost like a separate uh, section of the website, which is giving information on crew agreements. So if we click on that crew agreement toolkit, you have all these links that talk about what the agreements are like, how to find the ship number. So there's a lot of really useful information on this website. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Don't forget to download the handout. You'll find the link in the video description at the bottom of your screen. Thanks for watching.